Hey, problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today we're gonna to look at a drill driver and the different speed settings on there. How speed affects torque, and then how we're gonna be able to convert that angular speed into a linear speed. We're gonna use a digital tachometer and do some experiments, and then we're gonna to go to my desk and figure out the angular and linear velocities of different drill bits. So let's get started. So to start with, with the drill driver, it has a few different settings. The first up here is the clutch setting, and we'll talk about torque in a different video. I'll put a link to calculating torques. And today we're really just talking about speed. So there's a couple ways you affect speed on a drill driver. The first is with the setting on top, speed one and speed two. We'll calculate what those are on this drill driver with a digital tachometer. We'll put a little bit of reflective tape on here, use this digital tachometer and calculate how many RPM this chuck is spinning. And then the other way you affect speed on a drill driver is it actually has a variable speed trigger. So if you just push this in a little bit, it turns really slow. And then the more you pull it in, the faster it spins within these windows set on here. So the question is, why is speed even important when you're drilling? The main reason is you're gonna be using a lot of different drill bits. So if I have a quarter inch drill bit, that has a certain diameter or radius, or if I have a large Forstner bit, it has a certain diameter. So you kind of there's an ideal speed for the outside of that cutter to create just the right size chip, and that's why speed is so important, because when you change diameters, you're really going to change the overall speed of the outside of that cutter, and there's an optimum speed for every cutter. A lot of that is really done by experience, but understanding the math fundamentals behind it uh, really help you set the right speed so you get the right cutter speed. So where we're gonna start is we're gonna use this digital tachometer right here. This is gonna shoot a little ray and it bounces off this reflective tape. So I'm gonna cut a little piece of this reflective tape off. And I'm gonna put that reflective tape right on the chuck here. Let's see, I'm on setting one right there. That's staying on. I'm going to use this digital tachometer. I don't know if I'll be able to operate all this at the same time. So I would say speed one is about 550 um, revolutions per minute. I'm going to change over to speed two here. So now we're on speed two. Let me use a digital tachometer again. Nineteen twenty-five RPM. So that thing's cooking. We'll go back to one. Let's try that one more time. Five fifty-five is pretty slow compared to speed two. Nineteen twenty. So in general, the reason why you would have different speeds out the gate is the slower you go, like on speed one, the more torque you have. The faster you go, the less torque you have. So torque and speed are inverse relationship of each other. That, now let's go over to my desk and we'll figure out how fast at speed one and speed two, the different drill bits are going. Here's the box that the drill driver came in. And you can see on the box here that it puts out 576 inch pounds of torque. And then in speed one, it's zero to 600 RPM. And speed two, zero to 2000 RPM. So our readings are actually amazingly close. 550 RPM in speed one, 1920 RPM in speed two. You know, I don't know if the battery was fully charged, a lot of variables, more resistance, um, a lot of possibilities. 
but surprisingly accurate to the specs that the company puts out. Maybe only, I don't know, a few percentage um, off from that. So again, the whole point of the multiple speed settings on a drill driver is that it's a speed torque trade-off. So in speed one, you could go about 550 maximum RPM, getting a lot more torque at that lower speed setting. And then at speed two, you could go up to about 1920 um, RPM. The trigger mechanism as well is a variable speed trigger. So the more you pull it, the faster it spins. So you really could pick any speed between zero and 2000 RPM. So as far as torque goes, torque and speed are inverse relationships. So as torque increases, speed decreases, and the inverse is true as well, as torque decreases, speed increases. So depending on what you're trying to do, you could have one or the other. If you were to look at a graph of the two different variables, speed and torque, it would be pretty much a linear relationship from up high on speed to low down on torque. So you could either have high speed, no torque, or you could have high torque, low speed, and combinations in between the two. An equation would be something like torque is equal to one over speed. Again, meaning that as speed goes up, the bottom of the fraction gets larger, torque goes down. The way this would work as far as gearing goes is if you want to increase your torque, you would have a small drive gear and a larger driven gear. So that's basically gear ratios. If that small gear had, say, five teeth, and that larger gear had, say, 25 teeth, and the teeth were all the same size and they meshed well, then the gear, gearing ratio here would be the number of teeth of the larger gear divided by the number of teeth of the smaller gear. 25 divided by five will give you a five to one gearing ratio. And that would really slow the speed of the drill down and in turn increase the torque. Now let's take a look at angular and linear velocities depending on the diameter of the cutter. So the first drill bit is a Forstner bit. It's one and a quarter inch um, diameter. We'll just call that F, 1.25 inch diameter on that Forstner bit. Then the other drill bit is a quarter inch. We'll just call that D for drill bit. It's a 0.25 inch diameter, circle with a line through its diameter. So at speed one, 550 RPM, and we're talking about the first diameter Forstner bit. So at speed one is 550 RPM. The diameter is 1.25 inches. Remember, circumference of a circle is the diameter times pi. So that little Greek letter there is pi, which is about 3.14. So I take the diameter, I multiply it by pi, and then I multiply it by how many times it goes around. So that's the circumference times the number of times it goes around in a minute, and that'll give me the overall distance it travels per minute. Because I have the, the circumference, 1.25 times pi, times the number of revolutions per minute, and that's going to give me the total inches per minute it travels. So I'm converting from an angular velocity to a linear velocity. I'll just do that on my calculator. 1.25 times pi times 550 is just about 2160 inches per minute. So that's a lot of inches in a minute. Um, we'll, we'll calculate how many miles per hour uh, some of these speeds are in a little bit. Now, let's take a look at our drill bit. So on that quarter inch drill bit, it has a quarter inch diameter. So it's diameter times pi to give me my circumference. So 0.25 times pi times the same angular velocity of gear 
or speed one, 550 revolutions per minute. I'm going to do this on the calculator as well. 0.25 times pi times 550 is going to give me the linear velocity of that quarter inch drill bit. So the outside edge of that small drill bit is much, much slower. It's only 432 inches per minute. So you could see, you know, when you decrease the diameter of, a, of your cutter, you decrease the outside edge speed very substantially. You know, 432 is about a fifth of the other one. So the whole reason you change speed is because you change diameter of the different drill bits you use. So there's an optimum speed for every drill bit. You could look them up in a chart. Um, or you could see how well they're cutting and how big the chips are. So now let's look at speed two instead. So speed two is 1920 revolutions per minute. I'll do the same calculation on the Forstner bit and on the quarter inch drill bit. So I'll use the calculator and do the same thing except for, for speed number two, which is 1920 revolutions per minute. So I take the same diameter, 1.25 times pi times the 1920 revolutions per minute that speed two is going, and I get 9,048 inches per minute. Now let's go ahead and calculate the linear velocity of speed two and the quarter inch diameter drill bit. So same thing, I'm going to take the quarter inch, 0.25, times the number pi, 3.14, times the 1,920 revolutions per minute, and that's going to give me inches per minute and 1,508. So you can see it's going, you know, one-fifth the speed of the Forstner bit. So the larger the diameter, like that Forstner bit, the outside cutter is traveling at 9,000 inches per minute. And on that quarter inch drill bit, the outside's traveling at about 1,508 inches per minute. And that's really where the majority of the cutting's happening, is on the outside circumference. So that Forstner bit traveling at 9,048 inches per minute will be traveling such a fast speed that I'm not too sure it'll even have enough torque to do any cutting at all. So a lot of the times when you're using bits and you're just burning the wood and not getting enough chips, it's because you're going at too fast of a speed compromising the torque. So let's just see how fast that 9,048 inches per minute is in miles per hour by doing a unit conversion so I take that 9,048 inches per minute, I'm multiplying it by a factor of one. One foot is equal to 12 inches. One mile is 5,280 feet. And then to go to hours, I multiply by 60 minutes per hour. Let's make sure I have this right. My inches cancel, my feet cancel, my minutes cancel, and the only units I have left are miles per hour. And that's what I was after. So again, what I'm doing is I'm converting that 9,048 inches per minute into miles per hour. So on the calculator, I take that 9,048, divide it by 12, take that answer and divide it by 5,280, take that answer, multiply it by 60, and I could see that that Forstner bit is traveling from 8.6 miles per hour. So 8.6 miles per hour is a ridiculous speed for a Forstner bit, and that's why you would never take it up to the 2,000 RPM. If you're using a Forstner bit, you'd bring the speed down to a one, and then you still wouldn't go to that full speed. With such a large diameter, it's gonna take a lot of torque and very little speed. So remember that torque and speed are inverses of each other. So if you turn that speed way down, you'll increase the torque and you'll be able to cut better with a large diameter bit. If you're driving in fasteners, depending on what you want, you might want a high speed, you would go to number two, but you would be giving away a lot of torque. 
So the first thing we did is we looked at torque and speed and how they are inverses of each other. And if you want more of one of them, you got to give up the other one. Then from there, we looked at angular velocities, how many rotations per minute a tool makes, and we converted that into linear velocity, a distance over a time. So they are both speeds. One is a speed of rotation, and the other is a linear velocity distance over time. Well, I hope this video helped. I think if you understand these basics of math, it'll really help you using drills in all the fields, whether you're working with wood, metal, or auto. So if you like this video, hit like below, and please comment below on how you use a drill in your profession. I look forward to reading those comments. Thank you for watching.